welcome to my channel. My name is Amy, and today we're going to be talking about escape rooms, as always, but how I organize my own, what I choose to go first, middle, last, the order in which I place them all is very important, and I'm going to show you why. Let's get started. Most of the time I decide how I'm going to start my escape rooms based on what I want hidden in the room. Things that I want players to go and search for and find first. One of the puzzles that I really like using is card puzzles and so I give them four playing cards and then elsewhere in the room they will find something that tells them which order to put them in via suit. So like I would have one card be a club and then a heart and a diamond and a spade and you know they don't really know what order they would go into until they find this other thing in the room and I actually have a a uh, little picture frame that is that hint. So I like having that picture frame available in the room. It almost looks like decor. And then they would find these playing cards and hopefully realize that these two things go together. So that's one of the things that I like to start off with. If I already know I'm gonna use that puzzle, I make sure it's one of the first ones in my list. Another cool way to start off your escape room is to hand your players a letter. And I really like folding mine, putting them in an envelope, and then wax sealing them. I got this really cool wax sealing set, and so I find any reason I can to use it. So I can hide clues within a letter. I can do uh, write numbers in it and then highlight them or underline them or make them bold so that the letter itself maybe is an introduction as to what you do in the escape room, what your goal is, what the thing is you need to do to escape, but it will also hold some kind of a clue. Maybe it has a riddle at the end or something like that. So obviously if you're going to hand them a letter in the beginning, that needs to be the first thing you start with, so that's always an easy one for me. If I already plan on that, it's a good way to start and it's a good way for me to get the ball rolling with finishing the rest of my um, plan. It's pretty easy for me to figure out what I want to end the escape room with as well. Depending on what your theme is, maybe the end is to find an antidote, maybe the end is to find um, the map to escape or just a key if you have an actual lock um, That obviously you want to be the final thing for them to get out of the room or to unlock this final thing The key needs to be the last thing So sometimes it's helpful to work backwards and you can figure out what you want to end with Maybe where you want to hide that thing how you want them to get that thing And you can work your way back to what you wanted to start with and sometimes that is a good way to organize your puzzles as well for me, I like to put my coolest puzzles last just because I want everyone in the game to really have a good time and to enjoy it and to constantly be given cooler and weirder and just awesome puzzles and boxes and things like that. So um, I have Cryptexes. This is my little baby one, but I also have a bigger one and I have this uh, cardboard one too, which we'll get to in a second that I think are just so cool. I think the players really enjoy them as well. So if I can, I try and make these be the last things and I have to plan even farther ahead because they can't hold very big of things. So most of the time, if the end goal is to just get a key to open this one lock, I'll put it in here. So this is my second to last puzzle and it's just a high intensity trying to get this thing open. Another thing you might think of when you're organizing your puzzles is to put some of the easier puzzles first. You don't want your players to get so frustrated that they can't solve anything right at the beginning. So you want to give them things that are, you know, things hidden in the room that obviously go together like playing cards or maybe a straightforward riddle that they can immediately begin to solve or a math equation, something that is obvious of what they're supposed to do to solve something. You want to keep some of those harder puzzles for the end so that they kind of get into the groove of what the escape room is, especially for anybody that's never played one before. They want to get an idea of what they're supposed to be doing and how the puzzles line up into other boxes to give you more puzzles. So you don't want to start off with anything too difficult. If you're planning an escape room with stuff that you already have at your house or things that you, you know, you don't want to go out and buy extra things, you have to be careful about what boxes can fit certain clues. One thing that I had to be careful of was in this little crypt text, I was going to hide this magnet key. And if you've seen my haunted escape room, you've seen this before. And I figured, oh sure, you know, that totally fits in there, that'd be fine. And then when I first tried it, the day of the escape room, I realized that it just barely fit. Like, I, I don't know what I would have done if it didn't fit. I was kind of mad at myself for not testing that ahead of time. So you want to make sure that the boxes that you have fit the clues in the game that you have in mind. And if they don't, find new boxes, find new games, or rearrange it. That is a really key piece of um, advice that I can give you because I've run into that problem multiple times. <laughs> 
thing you need to be sure of is to make sure your locks fit your boxes. That might seem silly because most boxes fit most locks, but this is one of my examples that I have to be really, really careful of. This is a box that I got from like a church garage sale and the hasp on it, I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty small. And any of my big standard locks don't fit. They don't fit inside that little hole. So I have to be careful if I'm ever wanting to use this specific box, I have to use a very specific lock. I can only use some of my really small hasp um, or small shackles of key locks and I think my three number locks and some four number locks. But any of my directional locks do not fit. Any of my word locks do not fit. So that's something I have to keep in mind if I'm ever gonna use certain boxes is what size the hasp is. If you're making an escape room for more than about five or six people and you feel pretty comfortable about organizing things and as long as you're really writing this stuff down, I would encourage you to make multiple lines of puzzles, which means that if the group decides to split up, um, or if there's too many people that they have to split up, there's typically not a group of six that's following each other around the room, they tend to break off. You want to make two lines in your escape room, three, four, however many you can handle. Um, but I like to make at least two for the most part. Um, and that means having, you know, two starting places. So maybe you hand them a letter, but then there's also something for them to find in the room that they can immediately solve. And those go to something else, and those go to something else. And eventually, you'll just find a way to funnel it down into a single puzzle. One of the ways you can do that is just finding two pieces in two different boxes that have to go together. So one of those you can use is like a uh, red lens puzzle. I'm sure you guys have seen those. I also have like an orange lens puzzle because I have these uh, night glasses that you can use for that same purpose. But you can hide these and the red lens clue into two different boxes. So when you finish those two lines, you know, maybe one group finds, finishes their line earlier, um, they will find these and not know what to do with them or they might find the clue and not know what to do with them until the other group finds the sunglasses. So that's just a really uh, neat thing for players to have. It makes the game more exciting. If you want to have a linear game, that is totally fine, especially if you're making it just for like friends and family. Um, if it's not too big of a group, they're probably going to work on stuff together. But I've just found that it can get kind of boring if there's only one thing to work on and if that one thing isn't clear, it feels like there's nothing else to do. So you want to have multiple lines if possible um, just to make the escape more exciting and have more options available for people that get stuck. Another cool way that you can end escape rooms is to have little pieces uh, hidden throughout the game that they eventually find all of them to finish it off. And one good example of that is a jigsaw puzzle. So you can find pieces of this in different boxes throughout the game and they would realize, okay, we have to open all of these boxes and this would be then like the final clue. You might have something written on the back of the jigsaw puzzle or in this one, this has the uh, we, the people, in order to form a, you know, whatever thing written on the front. And so I like using a page line word puzzle or a line word letter puzzle, technically. You can also do this with riddles. I like to write riddles onto a like, eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, and then cut it up into multiple pieces and hide them throughout the different boxes. So same thing, you find pieces of it as the game goes on. Another thing I like to use is presidential dollar coins. Um, I haven't done this in a while because I'm just a little bit afraid that it's gonna, they're gonna get lost because they're so small. But that is always a fun thing to do is to have people find dollar coins and then I will tape numbers or whatever to the back of them. Or you have to find enough of them to do another kind of puzzle. But those are really fun to find just because they're you know gold and they're just really small. So that's a really fun one too is to have that be the final puzzle and then as they solve things they just get more and more coins. Another thing you might be careful of is if you have anything that is pretty fragile, that you make sure it's not available for the majority of the game if it's not going to get solved right away. So one of my things that I always keep in mind is this cryptex that I made for the very first escape room I ever did. And it's made from a Pringles can and the, all of it is cardboard and uh, styrofoam and hot glue. It works great. It's one of my favorite games. but because it's cardboard, it can be torn apart pretty easily and I'm really scared to really tug on it. And I, you know, the nature of escape games can be very destructive. People wanna open things in any way possible. If there's not an obvious solution, they're just gonna pull. So I normally hide this and I don't reveal it until I reveal the clue for it as well so that there's little chance for them to be pulling on it without the right answer. Another one is my spin box here. If you've seen my Halloween video, 
You can see this one too. The lid looks like it comes off, but it doesn't. It's held on by very tiny little pegs. And I also, if possible, hide this until they see the clue for it as well, because I don't want this to be broken. And I, I'd like to think that I can trust most of my players, but I've just had too many problems in the past that I hide these elements until I'm fairly sure that they're going to be open the correct way. Just to show you, I'll show you how it opens. Wow! <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of it. See, this is the scary part. So I've just solved two thirds of it and it pulls out halfway. <laughs> I really don't want people to keep pulling thinking they have the right answer when they don't. So that's why I hide this until they actually use it. I think that's it when it comes to finding ways to organize your puzzles. Thank you guys for watching and I wish you luck in all of your escape room adventures. Bye!